Okay, so let's get started. So before we talk about Prometheus, let's talk about the time series because Prometheus is a time series based a database. So what is time series? So if you look at the problems first, uh, we have so much of endpoints to monitor the data. Now, nowadays, you know that we are running applications in a distributed environment. So you have uh, thousands and thousands of servers, different, different servers, services, applications, you know, network, container nowadays, a lot of, lot of it. So uh, when we want to monitor the data, I mean, when you want to monitor the infrastructure application services or whatever, all these uh, things, then it generates a huge amount of data, correct? And as part of the monitoring, we would like to capture this and analyze that data, what you have. So you have a metrics and logging data, you have a financial data, we have event data, you have IoT data, you have many other stuff, container data as and all, and stuff like that. So all the data we are going to store it somewhere, right? Now the question is very simple, how do we store the mass amount of data? That is the first problem. But not only storing, but you have to process it all. So you have to analyze the data in a less span of time and get some, some meaningful output out of it. So how do we solve the mass storage issues and faster searches and queries? So that is something which we are trying to solve in today's sessions. So that is where the time series data is coming and uh, you know giving a solution. So what is a time series data? <clears throat> so time series data is not collecting every data which is generated by, by the distributed the multiple endpoints, server services, network and so on. So what exactly is doing? So as part of the time series data, we are collecting the data at a certain interval. For example, let's say, instead of collecting the CPU data for every seconds, we are collecting the data for every 15 seconds. So that way uh, you will <coughs> reduce the, the storage by 15x immediately, correct? Okay. Yeah. So that is what we do in the time series database. So you see that here we uh, at a time one, we collect the data v1, then time two, certain interval, then collect the data at the v2. So like that, we can at a certain interval, we collect the data. So primarily time series data has a three characteristics. One is like a time centric data. That means all the data which, which you are collecting, it is a time centric. On top of that, it's primarily insert. You cannot modify that data. You cannot edit or, or no alter and things like that. And also, uh, time series database right to the recent interval. So these are the some of the characteristics. Now, now if you'd like to look at the format of the time series data, so you look at this here, you will have a metric name and then set of key and values pairs. Now this set of key and value pairs is basically for the filtering. Okay, so there is a one matrix, there is a, some data, but you want to add more filters to it, you want to tag it, you want to label it, that data. So let's say this HTTP request total, it can be from the HTTP services or web services, or it can be from uh, app, uh, microservices one or microservices two or microservices three, or it can be department one, department two. So you want to uh, tag it. So if you look at the last line, that HTTP underscore request and they have a label with method post and code is equal to 200 and the somewhere you see the value is 1027 and the timestamp because you collect this data at a, at a certain interval so the timestamp on which the data was collected is that one last one okay gotcha. so most of the format in Prometheus you will get this kind of data format are you comfortable Yes. <clears throat> yes. So, so the question is, how is the different than having a time field and treat changes as insert not overrides? So yes, you can do more with the time series data, including the you can capture the past data. You can also 
capture the present data and also based on that past and project you can also identify and fix problems before they occur reducing the downtime so what does time series data look like uh, data look like so i've shown you this is the one example so is this the example actually no so when we think of then we think of okay at this certain time we collect the data like a 70 uh, at certain time if you see the last uh, 102 103 104 and so on at that time it was collected the data the tag with the host name region west or something like that left side you have a cpu data right side you have a free map data but actually it's not like this way we we captured our time series data this is what we assume this is what you uh, you know think of it so how do you how do you do that so for that we see that here this is the time series data now at a certain interval at that time okay certain interval at that time you have captured the time then cpu then mem free and then temperature so this is the sum in the, this, is, this is the format in which we capture the data so in this structure please remember that so here at the time you have a cpu 70 mem free and temp we don't uh, do it separate so that way you can still see and stuff so now if you want to queries you write a queries like this select star means everything where time is equal to x and you get everything cpu mem free temperature at that time so basically you can visualize that okay so at the time uh, that time seven uh, cpu was 71 percent memory utilizations and temperature at that time so you can correlate stuff and so on so yeah this is a, something which you need to learn uh, the queries which is called prompt ql which we'll get into okay so how to store the time series data and i think we have so many solutions actually look at this so many solutions we have to store the time series data but the one which we are learning in this session is prometheus so prometheus is one of the you know uh, cncf project open source solution very popular very you know community driven very powerful platform for storing the time series data though you can use influx db also and graphite is also there which you can use this many other tools make sense yes so these are the, some of the organizations where they use prometheus and so okay so now let's move on to the prometheus here it is okay okay so what is prometheus so prometheus is open source monitoring solution and it's of course time series database it's 100 percent open source and the license with apache 2 license you can see the code in the github this is this uh, product is written in golang so basically you can install in any platform windows linux mac or whatever it is uh, this is a cncf project so again if you know that kubernetes is also coming from the cncf so this way gotcha. uh, prometheus can be used to monitor the kubernetes clusters as well so it's a very inbuilt integrations available for the prometheus okay so these are the, some of the benefits of a cncf right now i'm just not focusing too much on it and stuff like that so yes uh, prometheus is open source system monitoring and alerting toolkit originally built at soundcloud and it is now standalone open source project and maintained independently of any company so this is written in go and these are the some of the stats which we have so it's a cloud cnca project graduated project optimized for time series data built in service discovery so service discovery is built in here flexible query language i'll teach you that's called promql okay prometheus query language uh, you need to know and uh, numerous integrations in place uh, through exporter concept which i'll discuss about as uh, prometheus works on the pull model ok 
Okay. So, what is a push model and pull model? Any idea, Jimmy? Uh, like say like a syslog server, you you it put it uh the client will push the data to the syslog server and vice versa. Yeah, kind of. So here, uh, Prometheus itself will pull the data. No one will send the data to Prometheus, but Prometheus, if it wants to capture some data, it has to pull it from certain endpoints. Okay, so some endpoints. Um, uses HTTP and plain text, so you can pull from the HTTP endpoints and plain text also you can pull it. Okay, so this is the stuff. Some of the features which you have in the Prometheus, uh, which includes multi-dimensional data mode. When you say HTTP, uh, it doesn't use uh, SSL or TLS? SSL, uh, of course, uh, HTTPS will be used uh, for that. Uh, it depends on the multiple, um, multiple, uh, what do you say? Uh, it uses the HTTP and HTTPS for sure. You can use both okay. of these. But when I say HTTP, that means broadly we think it's a booth uh, because okay. uh, you can query the HTTPS provided if you provide the certificates and uh, and to I mean private key and all stuff like that. So you can do that. Okay. Yeah. So okay. some of the features of uh, Prometheus are which is multi-dimensional data model time reach uh, data identify the metric name and key value pair. Uh, you can query the Prometheus using the prompt queue. Uh, again, uh, I just said time series collections happens by a pull model over HTTP. Uh, pushing time series is supported by some intermediate gateway and that we call it a uh, push gateway. So, okay, so there's a push gateway is available, but there's another solutions for it not inbuilt. Uh, targets are discovered by a service discovery and static configurations and multiple modes of graphing and da dashboarding supports are there. So these are some of the organizations where you use Prometheus. So I'll just skip this one. Yeah. Now let's discuss about the Prometheus components and architecture. Mm -hmm. So in the Prometheus, you have a Prometheus server. How to set it up? I'll show you that during the demo. So Prometheus server, which crap, scraps and store the time series data. So as I said, it's, it's pulling the data at a certain interval. That is what is happening. But uh, if you want to create an endpoint from where you should pull, and that is where you need some sort of agent. Now the question is, what from where you want to send the data? So do you want to send the data uh, uh, to Prometheus? Do you want to store the data uh, to the Prometheus from the code? Yes, code, that your application code then you have to use client libraries okay i repeat code means your source code the the application code which you are running from there you want to send some custom data to the prometheus and for that you have to use client libraries if you want to send the data from operating system or certain tools and store it as prometheus then you have to use exporter so in simple way if i put it up exporter is your agent in Prometheus. I repeat, exporter is your agent in your Prometheus. So client library is nothing but a different different code has been written to instrument the different different code like Java, uh, PHP, uh, you know, Ruby, Python and all. And that, that code itself after instrumentation will send the data, uh, will make it data available for Prometheus. Okay, we do have a push gateway also because I just said Prometheus is a pull based. Uh, so sometime you need the push gateway for the short leap job. And that is another product which we have. And there is an alert manager, of course, to trigger an alert to the third party people, uh, you know, people and we have alert. So yeah, this is the component which we have it. Look at this here. Uh, are you able to see this uh, whole structure? Hello. So you yeah, I'm here. See, I'm yeah. listening. Yeah. So here, if you see that this image, uh, this is the Prometheus server in the center, and uh, 
Prometheus server is getting a data from the short leaf job and it can be uh, any short leaf job sent to the push gateway and from uh, so all the short leaf job is sending uh, the data to the push gateway and Prometheus is pulling from the push gateway. Uh, Prometheus is pulling the uh, data from the long leaf job also this which we call it exporter okay uh, it can be code also by the way the application client library is code and after that uh, you have a data at the Prometheus which you can visualize for the analysis and graphing and stuff like that using Grafana you can use it and apart from that uh, Prometheus has one, one more inbuilt capability which is called alert manager which is a different component altogether to send an uh, alert for that so I'll show you that alert manager also as part of this so look at this here it's very simple uh, you have a data publish the data at HTTP endpoints Windows Server or Linux Server publish the data as HTTP endpoints or applications through the client libraries publish the data to the HTTP endpoints and Prometheus will scrap from that proof. It depends on the time which you set. So this is the pull based mechanism and this is useful for, for getting the data. Okay, so this is something which is one more image you can look at this. Uh, Prometheus itself have multiple internal components which is like service discovery, storage we have where the stories, uh, storing happens, rules, alerts and scrap. If you look at this very carefully, uh, Prometheus scrapping the data from the your code applications using a client library, we have exporter and third party libraries also there. Uh, if you look at the right side, uh, you can write a rules and alerts which will trigger the alert manager and alert manager send an email, pager duty or any, any other modes. Uh, dashboard, you can use a Grafana uh, for this. Are you comfortable with this architecture? Hello. Yes, I'm listening. Yeah. I'm, I'm here. I'm following you. I'm just taking notes. Yeah. Okay. So this is a one more image of the elaborated version of the last image. So this is the official image by the way. So here you have a Prometheus server as a different storage and pulling the matrices from the jobs and exporters, different, different targets. You can pull the matrices from the push gateway also and service discovery is, which is inbuilt. That means Prometheus servers can discover that all the parts of the Kubernetes also and if you want to work and analyze the data, you can use the Prometheus web UI, which I'll show you in the sometime. You can use Grafana also. If you want to have alerting, alerting, then you have to install the configure the alert manager and with different different mode and push the alerts for this one. So as part of this, I'll teach you how to set up a server, how to set up a, a Prometheus exporter how to set up a push gateway, how to set up an alert manager, and so on. So, like this. Okay, so some of the terminologies, you just get comfortable with it, and I think more or less you'll have this comfortable. Yeah, so metrics, client libraries, so whenever you hear the client libraries, uh, client libraries, you can say something code. Okay, this is a different, different code like a Go, Java, Python, Ruby, and stuff like that. So that is something which we have, which this code is being used for implementing. Uh, this code, you will put it in your uh, applications, uh, the one which you are running. It can be in Java or different languages as well. And that client library, when you have to write some code for that, and then custom custom metrics can be exposed at a certain endpoints, and from there, uh, Prometheus will pull it from from there. So that is direct instrumentation we can use from the exporter and stuff like that. Collector we have endpoints, instance job, and so on. So now I'll show you directly the demo, so it will be easy for you. To okay. get started. So now, first, let's go to the block. I need some server. So, what I'm thinking is 
let me go to the AWS and um, okay I think uh, it should be in local also I think I have a setup already yeah so here if I go and check uh, Prometheus I'm just checking here it is so I'm going to start this server okay so now how do we install it so I'm going to install the Prometheus server so for that here uh, the spelling mistake I guess hmm. so a lot of tutorials you have it uh, my right now the goal is to install the promise server so for that what okay. I'm going to do is uh, install and configure Prometheus server so this this guide I am following it so now this is the requisite you should install the NTP and this is for RHL now download wget download the packages so if you want to download the packages Prometheus uh, download so if you go to the website and here you have a download so this is the prometheus this is server version so linux this you can use it for windows you can use uh, darwin amd here you have uh, alert manager you can download here and multiple exporters you have so i'll come back to the exporter that's you can say agent different different agents okay so now i got this many machines up and running so I need to log in with the root and password is Rajesh What is IPA? So my IP address is 14. So let me access it. 192.168.1.14 and fourteen board. Okay, hello. Now this is the uh, root uh, Rajesh one two three. Okay, so now you have uh, machines ready. Now what to do? So here, if you see, there is one package already installed, downloaded. So if you see that I downloaded this package from here, and some one of the recent packages itself and i extracted this package here so if i go inside this saving some time this is the executable which you should start it and this is the configuration file from prometheus and this is also executable to this executable to check the configuration file here is a log and all stuff like that so what do we do so let's get started so how do you start it so get comfortable with this directory structure check the Prometheus version using this command and you check the file this file also you must check you have many entries also and now this command will start the Prometheus in the background are you comfortable you can run this command also but um, this command so let me start the recording I mean starting this executable now let me check that prom is there or not so here it is it's running so how do i access it you should check the logs and here you have logs you should check this a half and f if you want to see the continuous log and so on okay so that is stuff now how do i access the prometheus browser so prometheus is uh, available on 1990 okay so IP address which is I'm having is this one and 90, 90, enter. 
and this is your Prometheus server. So now what to do? So this is the place where you can write a queries. Um, let's understand. Yeah, yeah. This is the place where you can write a queries, execute it, and here the older UI is the status of Prometheus. Here you have database information all the command line which you can use with the prometheus which you have here configuration file the one uh, this file which is this file the one which you have that you can see it from the ui also and rules hold on, talk you, hold on now. um i'm trying to keep up with you are you showing me a a current like did you do the install or this is already a uh current instance like is this is an instance that you already was using so there is no as such install process that's what i said uh, oh, okay. a, uh there is a one file which you have to download that's what i said this is a file and the moment okay. you extract it that's the one and after that here it's here it is and this file this is the starting point so the moment you start so for that i share the commands which is here so you start and then you can access the prometheus directly so if you if you have it running in the background is there a uh, system d service file for that or you have to Not system one d. To you can check the process using prometheus here it is running no 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 but i'm saying like would you would you depending on i mean would you want to create a service file to also like say oh, okay system, okay system. right huh so right now i did not create a file um, because i was not needed i wanted to teach you the raw but let's say if you okay. want to create a service file so what we do in this case so in this case just scroll this down and um, here you see uh, oh, okay this, you have a service file so we okay. can do that one later also, but not required for that. Okay. okay, I'm I'm following you. I got you. Yeah. Okay. So now. So, okay. So I'm listening. Yeah. So now, if you see that here, rules, I'll talk about later. And here, there's a targets. So if you see the targets right now, uh, Prometheus is gathering the data, but from where? So I have Apache out of zero is up, I have a line X, zero is up, I have a Prometheus, one is up. So this, this data, that means Prometheus is scrapping their own data actually. That's the reason is up. Uh, remaining thing Linux and Apache is not up because we need to make it up and running. So this is the Prometheus. And now I am going to talk about how can we uh, monitor how can we pull the data from Linux? So what I'm trying to do, let's understand this MS Paint. Uh, so this is the one machine. This is another machine. Okay. Now this is the Linux server and this is the Prometheus server. So Linux uh, Prometheus server can pull the data from some HTTP endpoints. But how this Linux will expose at certain this endpoint? That's a question. And for that, we have concept called exporter, exporting the metrics. So this is for one exporter for Linux we have. Let's say if you want to expose uh, Apache also. So there's one exporter for Apache we have. Like that, we have a Tomcat. There's one exporter for it. There's a MySQL you have, and you want to ex expose the MySQL data. There's one exporter for MySQL also have. So what I'm trying to say here is, uh, when I say exporter or maybe agent, that means in Prometheus, whichever the tools you, you have worked with, it is very popular, you have one uh, exporter. It's like an agent. Make sense? Hello. 
hello yeah so the question is where from where do we get those agent that's a questions so are you understanding so far all of you yes yeah so that is the thing so now what i did i set up the prometheus server now next thing which i'm going to do is set up the exporter so one the exporter i'll send set up for linux one application i'll install apache and for that also i'll set up one exporter so two exporter i'll set it up that means two endpoint okay and i will configure the prometheus to go to this endpoint http endpoint and scrap the data you got it yes okay so now let's uh, restart this meeting uh, again because uh, this is a temporary only for set for 40 minutes so rejoin this meeting and we'll start this next phase of it okay